Call to order. This is the 15th regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council. And as is customary, the quote of the evening will be read by Sue Richards, our city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Challenges are what make life interesting. Overcoming them is what make li makes life meaningful. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Born. Here. Balk. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Vu. Here. And Wangaman. Excused. 15 present. We have a quorum. Now, if Alderman Vu can please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Vu. Looking for approval of the minutes of the former council meeting. So moved. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's an uh, email from uh, Alderman uh, Rinfleisch advising that uh, He's resigning from the Public Works Committee effective immediately <coughs> due to his new work schedule that uh, doesn't permit him to attend the Public Works Committee meetings on Thursdays. That, uh, oh, actually we need a motion. <coughs> file the resignation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. I hereby submit the following appointment for your confirmation. Heather Cleveland to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired position of Sue Bizzing, whose term expires on 4-26-2010, signed by the mayor. That lies over. And Alderman Vang Nang Vu to be considered for appointment to the Public Works Committee to fill the unexpired position of Alderperson Eric Rinfleisch, whose term expires 4-19-2010, signed by the mayor. And that also lies over. Public forum. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me. First on our list this evening is Rhonda Griffith. Is Rhonda here? Rhonda, could you come up to the mic, please? And if you'd like to get the mic situated so that it's right in front of you so everyone can hear. That should be good. What is your address, please? 14 Pinewood Drive. What Sheboygan. is it, 14 Pinewood? Drive. Okay. That's in? Summers Mobile Home Park. Okay. Okay, you will have five minutes. Go ahead. I am here on here in behalf of other residents of Sheboygan about the garbage fee that's being proposed to be added to our water bill. I feel the garbage should remain in our property taxes. It does not belong in our water bill. I'm already paying for storm water fee on my water bill, and I don't have any in the park, no curbs. We don't have any drainage whatsoever, and we are being charged for this fee in my water bill already, and I don't feel that I should also pay for other people's, other residents put more garbage out than me because I am a household of two, and there's some people that put out 10 bags of garbage, and I don't feel that I should be charged a fee to cover them. I think... It's fair to everybody if you could figure out how to keep it on our property taxes. If you've got to add a fee, keep it on the property taxes. Figure out how many people are in per household and charge accordingly to how many people are in their household so they pay for it and not all of us. So that way it's fair to all the, all the residents of the city of Sheboygan because that's where the, our property taxes are for. They're for the garbage removal and for snow removal of our property. Some of us only work, I only work part-time, and, and I, um, I don't explain it. We all have budgets, and my budget's pretty tight, and then with that fee added on, I'm having difficulty paying my bills as it is, as others, I'm sure, are in Sheboygan. 
there's a high unemployment, and an, I have a licensed stylist. I had graduated from school, and I can't even find a job to be a stylist at this point. And I'm sure there's other people that are looking for work that are out of work also, and they could feel that that would also affect their budget in some way. And I don't have health insurance, and my parents don't have health insurance. I'm sure there's other people that don't have health insurance, and I'm trying to pull money together just so I can get health insurance with it. any more fees added on. And it's gonna, I don't feel that I'm gonna be able to get health insurance, so I'm gonna be paying all these extra fees. And I don't feel that's right. So I'm, all I'm saying is if you could figure out a way to charge the landlords, the property owners, and they could pass the bill onto the renters, if a renter's gonna put out that much garbage, I mean, he should be, the landlord should be aware that how many people are in his apartment or house that he's renting because according to house, the fire codes, there is so many people allowed per household. And I know there's some households that have more than 15 people in them. And that is not, that's not right. And we're be now going to be charged for their garbage and they shouldn't all be there to begin with. I mean, and that's how they're going to be able to afford it because they're all working together and they pool their money to pay their bills. And I, that's not fair to the people that, that live normal. We all, five, six people in a house is more than enough, you know. And I just don't feel that that's right that we add a fee to the water bill. It should stay where it is. And if you have to, can we put a separate fee for the garbage on our property taxes, but it should still stay on our property taxes. And I... I hope I gave you a different idea, maybe how to do it. It's your decision, of course, to make, but um, take it all in consideration of all the residents that voted you all in and how we all feel out here and and understand that, um, I understand that the fact is that there's probably not enough garbage people maybe, and then there has to be somewhere you're trying to find a solution, but I don't think this is the right solution at this time. But if you can figure out some way to do it where it's fair to everybody, I think we'd all be, we'd all be on board. And thank you for listening to me, Your Honor, and ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Rhonda. Next. Uh, next on the list is Dick Susha. Dick, can you adjust the mic, please? Sure. And I need your home address. 15 North Point Drive. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I am representing the Sheboygan County Taxpayer Alliance this evening, and we're concerned about the recent pickup proposal, refuge pickup proposal by Mayor Ryan. You call it an environmental services fee, but it's still a tax on the citizens of Sheboygan and merely a shift in the method of collection. Now, here are some important questions I ask you. Since that fee will be included on the city's quarterly water bill, does that mean it will no longer be a deductible item for income tax purposes? If that is the case, we lose another deduction that we cannot claim at the end of the year. If the budget for refuge collection is 1.7 million, what constitutes the remainder of the 3.7 million environmental services fee per the 2010 budget? And will business and industry and multi-unit apartment houses be built for refuge pickup since they contract with private haulers? If not, they're getting a tax break. Well, more equitable for them, but it will affect the general fund. Furthermore, and this was not in your document, I believe you must have a separate ordinance to establish this fee, as was done for the storm sewer and for the wheel tax some years ago. You cannot just add this as a budget line item. We urge you to beware of service fees. It seems to be just a shift, and the tax levy will only be reduced by an equal amount, thereby not saving any of the taxpayers any money and causing them to, pardon me, causing them to have a valuable income tax deduction that will be lost. We say this is a shell game 
with the taxpayers the losers. Now, if you favor this proposal, then we suggest total privatization of refuse pickup that was proposed by the Taxpayer Alliance a few years ago. It would not only decrease the tax levy, but would also not impose an additional service fee. Yes, the people will still be paying for refuse pickup, but the service would be cheaper because of savings on labor, equipment, and maintenance costs. Now, I know an internal study was done a few years ago as to which would be cheaper, but I urge the council and mayor to review that position. Uh, it seems like an internal study of that seems to be very self-serving. Privatization may not be a deductible item for income tax purposes, but neither is a service fee for which this is being proposed. So therefore, I urge the aldermen and mayor to add this suggestion to the discussion before the passage of the budget. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this evening. Okay, thank you again, uh, former Mayor Susha. Getting on to the mayor's announcements, um, former mayor and uh, everybody uh, who is concerned, uh, I think you will be uh, glad to hear that uh, next week, Wednesday, November 11th, at 7 o'clock p.m., in the basement of City Hall in the uh, lower level conference room with, that we are referring to that as now, seeing as it is remodeled. Uh, we will be having listening sessions uh, regarding the environmental services fee, the proposed environmental services fee. Also that, that will be Wednesday, November 11th at 7 p.m. and also on Thursday, November 12th, same location, um, lower level conference room at City Hall. On November 12th, that'll be at 5 o'clock p.m. I encourage everybody, including all aldermen, to attend. Uh, we will have a formal presentation, and we will stay as long as anybody would like uh, to answer any questions and get public input. We're interested in what everybody has to say, and we would like to clarify our position on this. Um, I will not go any farther this evening. We will have plenty of time to discuss that. I'll stay all night if we have to. And I would like to have a, uh, a true, honest, and uh, open discussion on, uh, on exactly uh, what this means for our residents. Um, also, on, uh, under Mayor's announcements, uh, we, did, we have, uh, um, with uh, uh, Channel uh, nine, 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 95 and 990 Digital, did I get that right? Yep. Uh, which was formerly WSCS TV8, it is still WSCS. Uh, we've shot the latest edition of the uh, Mayor's City Desk Show, um, and that will air all the month of November, Mondays at 9 p.m., Wednesdays at 8 a.m., and Fridays at 2 o'clock p.m., if anybody is interested in seeing that. That is all I have for announcements. Consent agenda. President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I make a motion to accept and file all reports of officers pass all resolutions, and accept and adopt all reports of committees. Second. You have a motion and a second. Under discussion. No discussion. Roll call, please. Bourne. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Vu. <coughs> 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communication and petitions, 1515 and 1516 to be referred. Reports of officers 2, 15-17. By the Industrial Development Commission recommending approval for a drainage easement for Partners for Community Development to construct a sedimentation bay and eventual four bay adjacent to the pond on lot number one, Sheboygan Business Center. Vice President Heidemann. Uh, move to suspend the rules. We have a motion to suspend the rules second. and a second. Under discussion regarding okay. suspension? Um, basically, we want, to suspend, we want to suspend the rules so that we can get this project started. Um, any discussion on suspension of the rules? Alderman Hanna. Would it be possible, Mayor, if we were to combine that with 1532? They're both the same issue, and we're going to have to suspend the rules there also. 
1532. Yes, 1532 is the resolution. Authorizing the same manner. Yep. Would that be okay? Yeah. If we combine them and suspend you, the rules, you on seconded. Both? Yep. I'll second. Okay, great. Thank you. So we are we are doing a sus discussion regarding suspension of uh, 1517 and 1532. Discussion on the suspension only. All in favor of suspending? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay, Two hold abstentions. Hold on. We have Alder, President Gisha and Alderman Surik have both uh, abstained. I believe we could, because they are on the partner's board. Probably a good reason. Okay, okay most of the uh, rules are suspended. Okay. Vice President Heidemann. Thank you. Then I make a motion to uh, move and accept and file. To accept, accept and file the resolution and... Same thing in 1532? Yeah, same thing with 1532. Uh, let's let's or do one at a time. Office. Let's do accept and file the report of officer and pass the resolution. And pass the resolution. There Thank you. Well there done. we go. Under discussion. No discussion. Roll call, please. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Books abstain. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah. Heidemann? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Surik? Vanderweel? Aye. And Vu? Aye. 13 ayes and two abstentions. Motion. And I did it again, Jim. <laughs> Jim, aye. thank you. And yeah. Alderman, Alderman Bourne votes aye. <laughs> 13 ayes, two abstentions. Sorry, Alderman Bourne. Motion still carries. Uh, 1518 through 1530 to be referred. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that document 1525 be pulled. For 1525 be for pulled for from, the, from the packet. From referring. Okay. And uh, I move that the, uh, the matter, the, uh, the item be, be filed. Okay, uh, to be referred, so 1525, we have a motion and a second to, re, to file 1525. Under discussion? Oh, sorry, I, I, it was the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I was beeping for something else. Sorry. Okay. Um, under discussion to file 1525. Any roll call on that? Or? Filing 1525, all in favor, in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? 1525 is filed. That was through 1530 there, correct? Yes. Okay, resolutions introduced three. 15-31 by Alderman Gisha, authorizing an extension of the agreement for interim human Resources and Labor Relations Consulting Services with HR Unlimited LLC. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Oh, we need to suspend. Pardon me. I'm asking for a suspension of the rules. I apologize. On the suspension only under discussion? No discussion? All in favor of suspending? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Rules are suspended. President Kisha. And thank you, Council, for the suspension. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. On the resolution, we have a motion and a second. Under discussion. Uh, Your President Honor, if Kisha. I may, I, uh, the Council had asked when we reached a certain point, I believe the amount was $20,000 in the expenditure for this outside employee, that uh, the Council would be made aware and we make sure the Council has those extensions. We haven't reached that. We're about 15 but we thought with all the work being done on the labor side, it would be better to, that nobody gets surprised and we're trying to be ahead of the game to keep the council informed. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, will this extension, extension of these funds, will, the, will these still fall within the salary for the year of the resigned HR director? 
somebody could just fill me in on that. Uh, excellent question, and uh, the answer is yes. It uh, is still is in contained in the funds that were appropriated for what would have been a city employee, uh, only this is just an outside service, but well below. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bog? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1533 and 34 to be referred. Reports of committees 615-35 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license application number 7183 based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her status as an habitual law offender. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, Mayor, is Ashley Bauer here tonight? She's not here, Mayor. Please, please proceed. Uh, Ms. Bauer did appear before our committee on uh, October 27th, and uh, after uh, hearing her comments, the uh, committee voted unanimously to deny the uh, beverage operator's license based on uh, her uh, failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her beverage operator's license application, her record of violations related to the license activity, and her status as a habitual law violator. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Bowers. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 15 36 by Public Protection and Safety, recommending that the Council accept the donation from the U.S. Marshals Service of a 2009 Chevy, Chevy Trailblazer, $5,000 worth of equipment, a $6,000 gas card for the Sheboygan Police Department. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that the uh, RC be accepted and adopted. We have a motion and a second under discussion. And it's even better than what's listed here. This, this is the U.S. Marshal Service thanking our police department for working and being good partners with them. And the $6,000 gas card, I think, is an ongoing. They, their intention is it's not a one-time gift on doing this. There's no strings attached. It's to be used by our police department. And it's to thank the Sheboygan area, the Sheboygan Police Department for working so closely with the marshals. That's excellent. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1537 through 15-47 to be referred. Alder Person Clayunas. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I believe on 1537 that should be referred to City Planning Commission. Um, mm -hmm. That was the action at the Finance Committee. So not because we had it already and we need to send it to them. Oh, it's, it came from Finance. Yeah. 1537 will be referred to the City Plan Commission. Okay, thank you. Everybody can note that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we have reports of committees 7, 15-48 by Building Use Committee stating that they will provide a summary of costs for the remodeling of the west end of City Hall to be presented to the Council no later than Monday, November 16th, 2009. Alderman Surik. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alder Person Clayus. Thank you again, Mayor. Um, is this something that um, we had asked for originally, or is there some question about the remodeling? Why are you promising this? Is this something, something Alderman new? Sir? 
No, it was a request of the committee itself that we thought it would be wise at this point in time because of the ongoing remodeling that uh, the council be advised of what the cost is and where we're going with it. So. Okay. okay. Very good. And if I, just for the public, uh, for public consumption, uh, the west end of City Hall is where we moved in. Uh, we moved uh, the, the uh, building inspection department downstairs to the west end of City Hall. Also, we moved city planning from across the street to the west end of City Hall and the city attorney up to the third floor of City Hall. This is all part of the, uh, of the remodel, which uh, we um, uh, actually reduced our lease payment uh, at the building that we leased across the road by forty-six or forty-seven thousand dollars, and uh, we're operating in a more more efficient environment. So, but it, it it will be nice to have a report to know exactly what it's cost at okay. this point. Thank you, Alderman Zurich and Clay Unis. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Fifteen forty-nine to be referred. Reports of committees eight. 15-50 by finance recommending authorizing the expenditure of funds for the appropriate cable TV fund for the purchase of new camera and related video equipment for the common council chambers in passing the attached substitute resolution. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the report of committee and put the uh, substitute resolution upon its passage. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? If you don't mind, Your Honor. Uh, this. Uh, it always amazes me how many people watch the council on TV, and and as everyone knows, oftentimes you can't see it because of camera issues. These cameras are ancient; uh, they're not serviceable any longer. Switching gears, some problems. So we have money in the cable TV fund to be used for cable TV activities, and they'll be used in this particular case to enhance the cameras in the council chamber and a console so that they can be switched. It gives us the possibility when HD comes around, they're HD compatible. We flip a switch and basically we're HD. Uh, this is part of a three-phase process. It includes new audio because we have audio problems. Anybody who watches it on TV, it's crazy. Um, and uh, also looking forward, well, for Sheboygan, it's looking forward. Maybe everybody else has the last 10 years, but looking at streaming the council meetings on the Internet and even potentially housing them so people can look back, keeping a close eye on us all. Thank you, President Gisha. Uh, this, uh, this is for $50,000 for the, the cameras and related equipment. Initially, we had a, uh, an estimate that came in um, at $150,000, and uh, we have been working diligently to keep those costs down. So it looks like we can probably get the whole thing done for about seventy-five by the time we're done, which is half the cost of the original estimates by uh, by doing it bit by bit and bidding, you know, the the individual uh, pieces rather than just contracting with one company. So it's uh, probably the way to go. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. And Gisha. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 15-51 by finance. So we just... By finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget, establishing appropriation for cable TV equipment, and passing the attached substitute resolution. President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the report of committee and put the substitute resolution upon its passage. Okay. Motion and a second under discussion. This is the companion document, always with finance with this. It ends up being two things uh, that actually moves the money from the fund. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 15 52 by salaries and grievances, recommending referral of resolution number 117 09 10. By Alderpersons Boren, Bowers, Heidemann, Koth, and Clayunas authorizing the City of Sheboygan Collective Bargaining Committee to negotiate a city residency requirement for all newly hired, including full-time and part-time represented employees to the Common Council with no recommendation. 
Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I'd like to make a motion uh, to file this document, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to file under discussion. Under discussion, of uh, this uh, document was in, uh, came to salary and grievance. There was no recommendation. Uh, union negotiations are already underway. And although city residency is a wonderful thing, um, the salary and grievance committee has given its instructions to the bargaining team. And uh, they, that is to move forward. And I believe the process has already begun. And um, we put it in place. and. I don't believe we want to do the bargaining through resolution. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Alderman Rinflesh? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, well, the report recommends um, no recommendations, um, and there's really nothing else we can do besides accept and file uh, with the report. Uh, I do want to go on record, I think, though, that we can uh, make a stand and say that we do want, wish to negotiate as a, as a council. Um, residency requirements or not. Uh, if you recall, for the non-reps in the past, we had, had, had uh, negotiated and said in this, in this council that we could never go back to the, the union representatives for a residency requirement if we didn't at least start with the non-reps. And so when we did devote to, to have the non-reps become residents, um, that uh, it was a first step. And I would think it's important that we continue that step as well. Um, uh, but again, though, with the reporting committee, there's nothing else we can do. We really can't amend it to, to change any other statement that way, but I think we can, uh, uh, by speaking out, say that we think it's a good idea, and so the negotiation committee can, uh, can see that. When it comes to negotiations, too, the more we have on our side, that if we have to pull something away in negotiations, the better off we are. Uh, I think it's a very important one, long term. I think it's important for the city to have the, the uh, residency requirement for new hires. Uh, we don't ask anybody to move. Uh, that's a lot, but at the same time, I think it's important down the road. So I want to speak up very strongly on uh, having residency requirements at this point in time, uh, even though the, the committee uh, chose not to take any action. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rindfleisch. Uh, next, we had uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, I don't think we're far. I don't think we're that far in the process where we can't add this to the list of things on the city's side of the ledger for negotiations. I know the unions are going to have uh, are going to have a long laundry list list of things that are important to them, and I think this is important to add to our side of the ledger. It's my understanding that the bargaining so far is in the initial stages. There have not been any proposals set forth at this time, and so I still think there's time for this to go forward and be on the city's uh, side of the ledger. Uh, there's a lot of pain in the city right now with unemployment. Uh, uh, people in all of our districts, and uh, I would be willing to bet that if a, if a clerical p position came open right now, a represented clerical position, that position would come over, or would come open, and we decided to fill that in, in spite of the hiring freeze, that we would probably get three or 400 applications for that one position. And I certainly would like to see one of my constituents or one of your constituents that's qualified for that position, a city resident get that position rather than somebody that lives in Plymouth or Howard's Grove or Oostburg. <clears throat> uh, leading, leading economists in the, in the country are saying that even if the economy turns around, we will not be back to full employment in this nation as we were in 2007 and early 2008 for probably five years. And uh, so that's why I think this is very important. It's very timely. And uh, I'm not, I'm I'm not going to vote to file this document. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Next, we have Alderman Falk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, uh, to address the issue of why the committee uh, wasn't able to offer an a recommendation to this body, I was out of town that night for work. I was unable to chair the meeting. My vote would have been, uh, would have put it into the filing. And if I had been able to be there last, uh, last meeting, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. So uh, it, w it would have been the, the, the will of the majority of the salaries and grievance committee to have filed it back then, and all we'd be doing is approving that filing. Um, I applaud Alderperson Boren uh, for this. Uh, I'm actually, it's actually some of my fault. He and I talked about it, and I thought it would be a good idea. In retrospect, it was too late in the process. Uh, this, th this, these negotiations are ongoing, and, and again, I, I hope we can bring this up sometime when it's when it's more equitable, you don't get anything from these negotiating unions w without paying for it. So as soon as we ask them uh, to let us have this residency requirement, 
they're going to do what they do every time I've ever met with them. They're going to put their hand out. They're going to say, what's it worth to you? And that may sound kind of antagonistic, but that's the way it is. And if this city doesn't like that, then quit sending people to Madison that put the people in mediation and arbitration laws that are, that are in place that have tied our hands where they are now. Uh, so if you've voted in Wisconsin for the last 25 or 30 years and you don't like the way this is right now, look in the mirror and quit sending those kind of people to Madison. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Next we have Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I was under the impression that uh, this could be used as a bargaining ploy and that it wouldn't become part of our uh, laws or anything like that. So I do think that it would be beneficial to us to uh, use it as a bargaining ploy and uh, we give up and they give up. So, uh, however, without making it a, a law or an ordinance in the city, uh, I would be in favor of it. If I uh, may, may just speak briefly on it, uh, we, we with, all, with all due respect for Alderman Boren, and I, I myself, I believe in residency for our city employees. I have and I've, I've supported it since uh, the, the since my first year on the council. I believe that all city employees should be residents of the city. However, right now, uh, with negotiations, the city does not have a lot to give in negotiations. What we're looking for is basically um, to bargain economic issues. In other words, can we get a pay freeze? Um, that goes right to the bottom line of the budget that we're trying to put together right now. Um, can we possibly get a freeze on step increases or a delay in step increases? That, these are important matters right now that matter economically to the city. To throw residency into the mix right now, in my opinion, is like throwing another wrench in the gears. Um, you know, we can, you, you folks can pass this resolution if you'd like, you older persons, uh, directing the committee to negotiate it. But it will not have any immediate economic impact for the city at this point. So that, that would be my opinion on it, and that's all I will say. Alderman, or President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. When I became president of the council, an obligation that came with it was to be on the bargaining team. And that is made up with uh, Tom Rice, Terry Hansen, our finance director, Alderman Bauck as chairman of Salary and Grievance, and myself, plus the appropriate city department head, depending on who you're talking to, uh, whichever department you're talking to. So for people to say we're not too far in the process, it really isn't a, a big deal. We just started this thing. I've been in virtually every single minute of the meetings leading up to and including all these bargaining sessions we've had. And I'm talking hour upon hour upon hour upon hour. So for someone to say, don't worry about it, we just started this process. By our agreement with our represented unions, we cannot state to you in open session what's happened in those meetings to this point. But I can tell you that it's a myth to say that we're just in the infancy of this process and this won't mean a thing, because that is completely false. It's been brought up at these meetings, it's caused a problem in these meetings. And you can have residency tomorrow via the contracts. What are you going to give them? What if that committee comes back in and says, hey, guys, we got your residency. It's only going to cost you 4%. You're going to do that? We don't have any money. We have nothing to bargain with. I'm not saying anything out of school. We don't have anything. We've got a million $102,000 deficit. And you want us to bargain, insist on bargaining residency? This isn't the time for that. Uh, it, whether you, this is not about residency. There's a process in our city ordinance. It says the Salary and Grievance Committee should set the policy for the bargaining committee. Salary and Grievance Committee did set the policy for bargaining months ago. And that policy is exactly what we all voted on as our budget resolution for the year. That's the policy, that's the message, that's the honest message we've given our bargaining partners for the last dozen meetings we've had. And now we're going to go in and say, oh, by the way, forget about all that. We only care about residency. And it's going to cost us a lot of money. First, it doesn't follow the ordinance. The council has every right to jump in and say, you got to do this. Then you guys can all accept the result of that, and that is high wage increases. 
because that's the only way you're going to get it. We have nothing else to give. We have an insurance plan that there is nothing else like it that we can find in the entire country of the United States. So we can't give any more there. They don't pay deductibles, co-pays, all that stuff. Can't give them anything there. It comes down to wages. Again, this is not about residency. It's about a process. And it's about does, are the decisions we're making today on all these packets, on all these resolutions, on everything we do, make that $1,120,000 figure higher or lower? We have a statutory requirement by the end of this year to have a balanced budget by statute. This makes the dollar figure higher than the 1120000 where are you going to find the money? I get all sort, I, a lot of great ideas, but where is the money? This will do tremendous harm, tremendous harm to the, to, the, to the ordinance that we have in place, and the process was followed by the Salary and Grievance Committee and everything right on down the line, to now suddenly switch gears. Again, those who have not been in these meetings do not, I've committed hour upon hour upon hour in strategy meetings and then these bargaining sessions. I tell you it's false. That's a false thought that we're in the infancy and this won't matter. It is false and the result will be higher costs to the city when we don't have any money. If somebody wants to find the money to pay for it, that's one thing. But I, I urge you, please, don't do this. This is bad policy, bad timing, and let me give you an example, and I'll end. And that is, two weeks from now, I decide to write a resolution and say city employees have to pay 50% of their health care. And we bring that into the council. It's a great idea, just like residence is a great idea. We're going to do that. Two weeks from that, Alderman Hanna comes in and brings a residency and says uh, city employees have to wear red hats on Thursdays. We're going to then bargain that and change the bargaining process? There's a reason the ordinance is set up the way it is. So the Salary and Grievance Committee sets the policy. The policy is then carried out by the, by the bargaining committee, which they've been doing, because I've been there. And now we're going to change the whole deal? I'm sorry. That's just, there's a reason these ordinances are in place. And by screwing up the process, you open up the possibility of another ordinance in two weeks, another ordinance after that in two weeks, another after that. And who's going to pay the bill unless the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan for what I see basically as a as a feel-good measure that's going to cost a ton of money. And I would like to ask uh, uh, acting uh, the Florida Open for acting uh, HR director Tom Rice to give his opinion as a professional involved in this process. Do we have a, a second to open the floor to? All in favor of opening the floor to Tom Rice? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Tom? Ladies and gentlemen, you've asked my opinion. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk to you about statutes and general orders and those kinds of things because quite frankly, I'm not sure I understand all of it. I will tell you that we are into the throes of negotiations. We have put forth a position with all of our unions telling them that we want to partner with them and we want to share in trying to resolve the issue that we have before us, which is a $1.1 million deficit. Most of the bargaining thus far has talked about economic issues. As far as I'm concerned, that's all we're going to talk about because that's all we have to talk about. We have to take and complete an uh, uh, insurance program by December 15th so that we can put that in place. That is a monumental task. We have to convince our unions that there is no money available. And Terry and I and Jim and uh, Corey are working as hard as we can to make sure they understand that. I don't know whether you understand the magnitude of what we're trying to do. But we're trying to get a contract with seven different bargaining units with virtually them giving up quite a bit and us giving them nothing. If anybody's been involved in labor relations, that's almost an impossible position to bargain from. And yet I think we can be successful simply because I think in talking to our unions, they understand the situation. And thus far, they've been very reasonable. 
I think if we throw this into the fray, they're going to consider this as unreasonable. We don't need more things to withdraw from the table. We have very few things to talk about. All of them have a dollar impact, and all of them need to be resolved. So I would just urge you to think about the impact this can have. We have said across the table to every one of our unions, and we will continue to say we have nothing to give, and we don't. I'll Thank answer you, any questions that you have. Are there any questions for <clears throat> Acting HR Director Tom Rice? Thank you, Tom. Next, we had uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, I beg to get, disagree with, uh, with uh, President Gisha on this. Uh, <clears throat> this has been out there in the public domain. Uh, this is not springing a surprise in our bargaining units. This has been out in the public domain for at least the last two weeks when this got referred to salary and grievances. Uh, and as I said before, the bargaining units are going to have non-monetary things on their wish list. And uh, I think the city can have this on their side of the ledger as a, par a partial, uh, as, a, as a bargaining tool. And if push comes to shove, if it does involve money, that doesn't mean that the city bargaining uh, committee has to accept the proposal of the unions. It's a give and take. But I definitely think we should have it on our side of the ledger because I know that the bargaining units are going to have a long list of, of items on their, side of, on their side of the ledger. And also, uh, I think you know, it might behoove our, our represented employees to show a little empathy and sympathy for the economic situation in the city. This is not going to affect one city employee who, who is now working for the city. This is only going to affect new hires, and I think it's time for our public employees to show a little empathy for what's going on in this community and who's paying the bills for their salary. This young lady back here who happens to be a constituent of mine is having a hard time making ends meet. And there's hundreds if not thousands of our constituents that are having these same difficulties. So let's, step, let's have the bargaining units step up to the plate, show a little empathy for the people that are paying the freight in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. We have uh, Alderman Bout next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of thoughts. Um, the reason that we shouldn't vote on this, and the reason we should vote to file, is because there are a lot of older persons in this room that would vote no, um, not because they don't support residency, but because they understand that this is not the right time to engage in this conversation. And the second thought is, so uh, the reason I think we should file it tonight is because Putting it on the, on the docket to, so we can stand up and be counted with regard to our position on residency, that's not how we would vote tonight, or most of us anyway. A lot of us would vote based on the economic impact of already being engaged in the uh, negotiations. Uh, and the second point is, um, Alderman Bourne's got a lot of passion for this, and he's exactly right. My experience so far in the bargaining process has been that there is a disattachment or an unattachment between what the municipal bargaining units feel and feel obligated to do and accept and what's going on with our constituents. There is a disconnect there. Um, and uh, the fact that uh, HR uh, Director Tom feels that it's a monumental task to get 450 people covered with medical insurance and paid next year will tell you again, and he's not wrong, I'm not mocking him, I'm saying that it's unbelievable that to get 450 people health insurance and paid next year, we have to go through the gyrations that, uh, that President Gish is talking about. It is unbelievable. So I say again, if you find it unbelievable, look in the mirror if you've been voting in Wisconsin for the past 25 or 30 years, because you voted those people to Madison. Cut it out. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you again, Alderman Bauck. Once again, President Gish. And then I'm done. Um, I won't talk about Madison. I'd like to uh, address the point that they'll have non-monetary items and will have non-monetary items. From a person who has sat in these meetings, that does not exist. That is a fantasy. I'm talking about reality of what actually goes on in the room as much as I can say based on our confidentiality agreements. 
They don't have a list of little throw-ins, and we have our list of little throw-ins. This is not a little throw-in. I will further state that if we have to give up real life cash percentages to, to make this, and I believe improper resolution based on our ordinance, we can do it, not in the proper in the sense that it, the council can't interject, but improper in the sense that it is screwing up a, a process that's already in place. On record, I will not be responsible for the pay raises that are gonna be result in us getting this because we'll have to give up cash. There are no non-monetary items. If that is what's in your head, it doesn't exist from somebody who's been in the room for virtually every second of these discussions and backed up by our professional uh, uh, HR person, Tom Rice. Um, it's not, oh, we'll give you this and we'll give you that and there's no money really that costs any of this stuff. That's not the case. We are bargaining financial items and basically financial items only. There, are, there isn't anything else. This will balloon our deficit in 2010. That means more layoffs in the city, less cops, less firemen, less office people. If we have to give two or 3%, you are voting, if you vote not to file this, for more layoffs. There's just no other way around it. We gotta give up cash for it, and we don't have any cash. I'm not saying residency isn't a good idea. I'm saying that the, this process and interjecting it at this time, with our budget situation at this time, is gonna mess everything up, and I will not be responsible for those percentage figures that will blow this budget up for not only 2010, three-year deals or two-year deals, it could be 2011 and up to 2012. It will cause you major financial problems. Fanid. Thank you, President Gisha. We are out of lights on the motion to file. Roll call, please. Anybody know what they're voting on? No? And I vote would be to file the documents. Okay. Um, Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Sirk. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Vu. Aye. Boren. No. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. No. Excuse me? No. 10 ayes, 5 noes. Motion passes. To file, yes. To file. Okay, ordinances introduced 10. 15 53 lies over. 15 54 and 55 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 14-36, resolution 109-09-10 by Alder Persons. Gisha, Clionis, Boren, Montemayor, and Heidemann authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget establishing revenue and appropriation for updating lighting in city buildings and HVAC update at municipal service building and for business development loan funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, CDBG Recovery Program. President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion in a second, under discussion? No discussion, roll call please. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. and Koth. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Resolution 110-09-10, 14-37 by Alderpersons, Gisha Clayunis, Boren, Montemayor, and Heidemann, authorizing the city of Sheboygan in the county of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, to borrow from the trust funds of the state of Wisconsin the sum of $800,000 for the purpose of financing stormwater improvements and for no other person. Purpose. purpose. <laughs> Excuse me, and for no other purpose. And don't give it to any person. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Vu. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question of the last paragraph, um, the first paragraph on the back. The way I understand this paragraph is that the, um, there'll be 
property tax rates throughout the city, but it could be, I could be wrong in maybe just to prop, property owners that their front properties receive sewer work. Just want to clarify on this paragraph if uh, throughout the city or just uh, to construction Okay, you're talking properties. about the paragraph on the back. Uh, the first paragraph on the back that there shall be raised and there is levied upon all taxable property. Is that the one? All taxable property within the city of Sheboygan and the county of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, a direct annual tax for the purpose of paying interest and principal on the loan as they become due. Um, President Gisha, would you like to handle that? Steve, would you like to handle that? <laughs> In other words, I think what this is saying is we're gonna have to find, find the money to pay this back, obviously. <laughs> But is it throughout the like city or just to specific property owners? He wonder if it's a, he's wondering if it's an assessment. Not like her. No, it's not an assessment. In order, in order to borrow funds and have a balanced budget, you have to agree that you will raise taxes over the, the life of the loan in order to pay back the loan payments. Now the, the state requires you, uh, that's how the state guarantees the loan basically is that the city is agreeing to pay it back over time. And I don't know how the loan repayments are structured, but they require that the city uh, adopt uh, in each tax year, include an amount to cover the principal and interest of those loan payments to pay back the state. And, and if I may, um, by Attorney McLean saying that the city raised taxes, it doesn't mean that the city is going to raise, raise the tax levy to repay the loan. It means that the city will have the revenue coming in and it will be in the budget to repay the loan just as it would any bond or, you know, any, uh, any, any bond or any other uh, borrowing that we would do. Okay. Gisha? Thank you. Thank you. If I could further maybe clarify more direct to Alderman Vu's point, this will not be assessed just on the people in that area, Alderman Vu, this is paid the bond payment in this case, or in this case technically out of this land trust fund where the monies are coming from, will come from the general fund. It won't be just assessed on that one section. It's over the whole city. And this is normally something that we would in, in former years go out on a bond. Uh, we would have, we have a bond uh, issue to, to take care of this, but with the small amount and, and uh, not wanting to um, go out on the market for bonding right now because we do not, uh, what word am I looking for here? We don't want to go to the bond market. We don't want to go to the bond market at this point with the unemployment as high as it is in the city. Not a good time to get our credit rating. Exactly, we don't want our credit rating looked at. That's what I was looking for. Um, it, it makes sense to go to, uh, go to this fund to borrow the money from the state. Alderperson Clayunas? Nothing else to add. Any further discussion, Attorney um, McLean? I, w I would just add, Your Honor and Council, that if you did go to bond, basically there'd be the same requirement. You have to agree to the bondholders that you're going to be repaying the bond proceeds. So you've got to agree to annually uh, levy an amount to cover the principal and interest of the bond. So uh, this is a small dollar amount. Uh, if you were to bond for it, in addition to getting credit ratings and that sort of thing, you're paying a lot of additional costs for a rather small dollar amount. And the loan uh, interest rate from the state is very favorable, 3.5%. So it's, it's uh, I think, probably beneficial to go through the state trust fund loans here than, uh, than to bond for it. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Any further discussion? None. Roll call, please. Clay Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 14-38, resolution 111-09-10 by Alderpersons Gisha Clayunas, Boren, Montemayor, and Heidemann authorizing an amendment to the contract for professional services 
for the design and engineering services for Taylor Drive Road Reconstruction and Storm Sewer with Donahue and Associates. President Gisha. Thank you. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. No discussion. Roll call, please. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Ann Clayunas. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. 1556 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Terry Lee Blevins requesting a waiver relating to the sex offender residency restrictions. That will go to public protection and safety. 1557 is a communication from the Boys and Girls Clubs requesting permission to host the 2010 Gus Macker three on three basketball tournament at Deland Park August 5 through 8, 2000. And I assume that would be. Yes. That would be 2010. That's a typo on that one. That will go to Public Works in Marina and Harbor. 1558 is an ordinance repealing and recreating Section 10 103 sub G of the Municipal Code so as to create an economic development grant for certain successful applicants for a reserve Class B alcohol beverage license. That lies over. 1559 is an RO by the city clerk submitting the city's tax levy report that supports the 20, excuse me, the 2009-10 budget for the Lakeshore Technical College District. That will be referred to finance. 1560 is submitting the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction tax levy certification for the Kohler School District. That will go to finance. 1561 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Ken Wilson regarding a bill that he received for $331.44 for a recycling violation and asking that the bill be waived. That will go to Public Works. 1562 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. That will go to Law and Licensing. 1563 is an RO by the Deputy City Clerk submitting a communication from Linda Shimon requesting that her accident claim number 29-08 attached to RO 311-0809 be filed as there is no need to pursue payment of any medical expenses since the insurance company paid the expenses in full. That will be referred to risk management. <coughs> Thank you, Attorney McLean. And for a motion to adjourn. In a second, we are, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. A letter to risk management.